Now that the election is over, many of us are wondering, what do we do now? I, mean, I would hope that regardless of party affiliation, Catholics recognize that our nation, indeed our world, is experiencing a crisis. And I'm not talking about the economy. Our religious freedoms are under attack. There's little respect for the gift of life, and many people have simply turned from God. We live in difficult times for sure. That being said, this is nothing new under the sun. Think back to the Old Testament. How many times was the nation of Israel experiencing something analogous to what we are now? How often was their freedom to worship threatened by the Egyptians, the Babylonians, the Romans? Their temple was even destroyed. They were scattered, exiled. Many of them were killed. And what about the early church? Persecution was rampant in the first few centuries after Christ. Many believers gave their own lives then, too. Now, I'm not trying to belittle the issues of our day, because they are serious. It's one of the reasons why our Holy Father called for the new evangelization. And this year is particularly supposed to be a year of faith. I mean, call me crazy, but I think he knew we'd need it. It's yet another sign that the church is guided by the Holy Spirit. But what did we think that Pope Benedict was calling for? It's not just a time to take stock and be thankful for the faith of our fathers. I mean, it's part of it. But the year of faith and the whole new evangelization is about turning outward and upward in these difficult times. And while our goal is to ultimately lead others to Christ, we have to first take a hard look at ourselves. Are we living the way we should so as to actually make faith come alive? Because everything we do needs to be centered around the Eucharist, a Eucharistic way of life, the self-offering of Christ. That's what it's all about. Loving self-donation is the key. It's the blood of martyrs that has watered the seeds of the church through the centuries, as Tertullian once remarked. And if it isn't a blood-red martyrdom, which is happening even now in various parts of the world, then it's a white martyrdom, where we're called to die to ourselves and give of ourselves on a daily basis to God and neighbor in the same way that God gives himself to us. So what do we do now? Get holy. Get to Mass as often as you can. Seek regular confession. Develop a life of deep prayer. Spend time in Scripture. To change culture, we must first change hearts. But the first hearts we must change are our own. We must be witnesses, not just evangelizers. We must be saints, not just culture warriors. And in the midst of our trials, don't forget, as St. Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice because God is our Father. Jesus is our King. The Holy Spirit still moves. The same God who's been caring for humanity since its fall in the garden is the same God who looks down upon His faithful with tender love even now. Earthly kingdoms come and go. Seek first the kingdom, His kingdom, and all will be well.